I am going to write you. There we go. Oh, well, there you go. You got the bottle. He's got the bottle off. I couldn't Ladies get the top off the bottle. It was very frustrating. But here we are. It's a good metaphor. Have a little Sir Romulan Pogia. ale. Yep. For people watching on YouTube, you can see Clay drinking blue uh, windshield washer fluid. <laughs> and having, <laughs> that's having, true. There's no I, There's no guarantee that's not what it is, honestly. I don't think it was that bad of an episode. You don't need to drink antifreeze yet, Clay. Let's get no, into Voyager's yet. fifth season before we start chugging. We bought... um. We live in New England, and Amy went out the other day, and uh, the car thing said that the washer fluid was low, and she went into a gas station. She bought it, and we put it in the car. And the next day, when I tried to run it, I was like, oh, is like the pump gone or something on the washer fluid? No, it, once the car warmed up, it w- was working again. It just froze. The point of the story is, <clears throat> what kind of place in New England sells anti washer fluid that is summer mix in yeah. At any time of year. They they just sold a summer mix. They had no antifreeze in it. It's just blue water that they gave you when it froze. So Yeah. Lesson learned. Yeah. No. no. <laughs> <laughs> why maybe would you be able to buy it? Why why do you buy redone their stock winter? Yet, they had. Yeah, no I mean it who who cares? I mean it does the same thing, right? Well it doesn't freeze. Well no, I but I mean like if you're if you're the, the gas station who's buying it. Right, is and there I don't think benefit? it's any more expensive. I don't yeah, think it's no, I, I don't think it's more expensive. Living up here, there's the same price. no real benefit to doing uh, summer. I didn't even know there was a thing. Yeah, sounds delightfully zesty, though. <laughs> I mean, I guess it's less. You could you could you could live in Arizona and spray the shit into your eyes all day, and nothing's going to happen to you. But I up guess, here, yeah. we, we live uh, dangerously. <clears throat> Welcome everybody to our discussion of hunters. The episode of Star Trek Voyager. It is the fifteenth episode of the fourth season of Star Trek Voyager. It came out on February eleventh, nineteen ninety eight. Written by Jerry Taylor, directed by David Livingston. Universe in Universe Date five one five zero one point four twenty three seventy four. In this one called Hunters, Voyager receives a message from Starfleet containing letters from the crew's friends and or family. And people are very excited to hear the news. They couldn't send voice messages. They could send the doctor. Hmm. And they can slowly send text messages to each other. So we're figuring out what the relay's uh, capabilities are at this point. But we're back with the space relay. We're back at the Herogen. I'm we're never still- going to get over I'm never going to get over the fact that they can um send the digitized matrix of a holographic life form. Yeah. Over 62,000 light years. But if you want to read your letter, you have to get your own individual pad, <laughs> iPad to read it on. <laughs> Neelix is coming in with like a stack of iPad. Just You can't just like forward that shit. That's the ultimate insecurity. When you're yeah. Chicote and you need to take this to your ready room, you don't need some file that's on the mainframe of the CPU computer or whatever they're going to say to have, be hackable and let people like know how that the, your friends are dead. It's like how all the, the machines that trigger the nuclear bombs still running floppy disk or something because you can't hack them <laughs> yeah that's right <laughs> <clears throat> the old floppies the ones that were legitimately floppy not yeah. the new fangled ones this is hunters we're continuing the i think i i think they're called the herogen i think i'm pronouncing that right i um, think that's right I, tom, tom or what's his one name? of them says yeah, it kim says episode. it kim, kim harry says, says it yeah also isn't it weird that they kept the name floppy disk when they Even moved after to the, it went hard, the smaller, harder disc. <laughs> like that's that's like I was if, begging if, for a hard disc. <laughs> that's and like they, if, they provided it. If they had gone from uh, vinyl records to CDs, and they had continued to call them vinyl records or LPs or yep. something. Yep, it's weird. the same with the um, the little save icon in any application makes no sense to anyone born after 1990. I don't think they're like, what the fuck is this thing? How, how does this mean save? You know, like having save the icon? image. It, when you click save on like your Word document, it's a floppy. It's a disk. Oh, you haven't used it in fifty right. years, but it's still <clears throat> right. the thing. It's it's like playing music, and it's like a reel to reel image. It's like this right. is incredibly dated. Should be something else. What'd you think of Hunters? Uh, I really liked this episode. This was basically the episode I kind of wanted to see in the last episode. Um, I liked all the stuff they got into with the characters. I thought uh, the letters was a, a good device to kind of amplify the um, 
uh, the anticipation that they were getting at in the, in the previous episode. Uh, and I thought it was a good catalyst for some good scenes and good conversations. I thought the talk with Jane Wayne seven about her maybe having a family on earth was really good. Um, <clears throat> I thought the Paris and Bellana scene was great. That was probably one of the better scenes of the season for me because mm-hmm. it was two characters with very clear points of view on a subject creating drama out of their difference of point of view, which is exactly what I talk about all the time with that. The show doesn't do very, nice. um, I, uh, I don't think that I, I assume this is uh the Herogen come back. I assume again. Yes. How many? How many next, more times? Next episode. Is it, is that the last time? No, I think they continue for a little while, but the, this okay. is, they certainly continue for the next couple of episodes. Being in it, uh, I didn't think they made much of an impact. They kind of just sort of came and went. Um, I I I guess I kind of like that they're uh, non copyright infringing predators. <laughs> But mm-hmm. yep, we well, had designed... the predator face. The face <clears throat> predator true. was in that, that episode before, and this time yeah. they're just like, let's just go with what the predator does. That's why episode. Murphy was asking me, like, did you get to the episode with the predators in it yet? And I and I said yes because I thought he was talking about that other alien species. The old I think one. He was yeah, talking the, about yep. this. Yeah. Yep. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's kind of a not a great design. It looks kind of like a '90s fighting game character or something. Yep. Um, you know what I like about them. And I don't know if this is the small uh, successes you have with Voyager. I was thinking, you know, I don't know if Star Trek has ever had an alien race that their defining trait is that they're much bigger than everybody else. Yeah. <laughs> like, I, the, like the Nausicans are kind of tall, but these guys are uh, deliberately set up to be very large. They're just much mm. bigger than everybody else. And uh, before we've had, you know, They've kind of gotten around it by saying that the Klingons and the Vulcans are like 50 times, they're like ants to humans. They're like 50 times mm-hmm. the strength and they can, you know, pick up 50 humans or whatever. These guys <laughs> have the very funny scene where he like picks up Tubok by the shoulders and like throws him into, <laughs> into the wall. And that's all good. I, I, I think their design is kind of silly and they don't really, they don't really have a thing yet. At least yeah. it's like they, they're just yeah. the predators. They're just hunting people. Uh, they get a little bit into the ultra violence of he's like I'm going to cut his stomach open and take out his intestines for whatever reason. But outside of that, uh, they are fairly derivative of the predator, and uh, they they do the thing that the predator smartly avoids, which is that they talk to each other. So yes. it, it seems stupider yeah. when they talk to each other. What about when he says, "What the hell are you?" After <laughs> what the fuck are you? Motherfucker! Yeah, I I was expecting uh, I was expecting a much more elaborate system of war paint to be involved when he did that one thing on his forehead. I was like, "Oh, cool! What's that going to be?" It's just one swipe, just one, and he does multi. It, he does blue to the uh, yeah. The it's like team. a it's like a kindergarten class, really, <laughs> where they just kind of like dip their finger in one color and smear it on your face, and that's kind of yep. it. Yeah. We can get into the Herogen, but I think that the the better thing is the letters aspect of this because mm. I would agree with you that I I think that this one does what Message in a Bottle doesn't, and just as I message just as I mentioned in the Message in a Bottle. This is a retroactive episode to me that I'm going to retroactively go back and say Message in a Bottle is a two because I think that this I think that this is better and, and Message in a Bottle is, is a two. Uh, this one does the letter thing, and I like the letter thing. I think I like about 50% of the letter stories, and the other 50% are feel... Uh, constructed in the sense that i don't know why this character is doing that story sometimes it's it's okay. like it's not it's not natively stuck in like i i like the janeway one quite a bit i think that that's the most important one that shows like a <clears throat> the bittersweetness of that one is mm. important um that's the one that feels like it had the most impact of the ship being gone Right, like the rest of them yeah. are just kind of like yeah. catching up with you. It's like good to talk to you. I like the Tuvok one, just because that was played perfectly. I think yeah. for a Vulcan character, so I really like that one. I'm less enamored with the Tom and Harry ones, uh, just because those <clears throat> feel a little bit more stock in a lot of ways. Of like, ah, you don't know my father. He's a dick. And it's like, okay, yeah. well, you know, like, and I'm not. 
I don't for you could argue one way or the other. I think it's just not a great Tom Paris story in the sense that it feels like it's plastered onto a Tom Paris where the Tuvok and the Janeway one have been pre-established as things that could happen and they yeah. logically came out to their conclusion. Yeah, I would agree with that. I I do think I do think that the Harry one <laughs> the Harry one makes kind of perfect sense for him as a character because he's yeah, not yeah. there's really nothing interesting about him other than being like a corn poke kind of yeah and so yep. he gets a very corn pokey kind of letter like his his story isn't the letter his story is whether or not he's going to get the letter right so it doesn't yep. really even matter what the letter says yep. um <clears throat> paris i agree i felt the same way where it's like i is this something they've talked about before that paris has daddy issues i don't I don't think so. I know that we see his father coming up. So I don't, I, I'm sort of tainted. I don't remember, I don't think they've ever brought this up before that his father's an admiral. I might sure. be wrong, but I, I don't remember it. Yeah. And so, so that one feels like it's, like you said, it's just kind of like tacked on to Paris. Um, however, I think it does serve its purpose pretty well, which is being the foil for Bolana's story. Uh, uh, well, I mean, she does, technically doesn't get a letter, but she's involved with the uh, with the one Chakotay gets. Um, and I think his nonchalance about whether or not he's going to get one or or whatever, I think, is a good counterpoint to. Oh, it's not. It's not that his his story is like is like less the letter and more the fact that he is happier on Voyager than he was at home. Yeah, and I think that's the important thing, and that's the thing that is the good catalyst for the drama with Bolana, who is, is dealing with the fact that all of her friends back home have just been killed. And so yep. like, there's a dis there's a disconnect there, which I think works pretty well, but I, but I agree that it's, um, it, it, the actual substance of the letter that he gets and the res the way they resolve it at the end where he's like, yeah, I don't know, maybe I kind of would like to read it. That, that's yep. a little bit, you know, uh, stock. I, w I would totally agree that the important thing is that it's the contrast of you want some characters to not want to get home as much as some of the right. other characters. And I yeah. think that that's very important. I, st I still think that the the daddy issue thing is tacked on to get to a good result, unfortunately. Yeah. It's like it's, yes, it's kind agree. of a made up thing to give you a good story, but the, the made upness of it still bothers me a little bit. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I was thinking as I was watching this. It would be really interesting to do an episode from the point of view of Earth when Voyager comes home. Because I was just thinking about how it, how interesting it is where it's like, these guys are going to be gone for so long. You could conceivably have, like, let's say you have a, a woman whose husband is on Voyager and is gone for 10 years. You could conceivably have that person come back and then get back together with his wife and have to explain or choose not to explain the fact that in those 10 years he had a wife maybe mm -hmm. he had a child maybe they died you know like they, there's a whole separate thing that like you can't even it's a it completely so utterly disconnected from anything that's happening on earth like that stuff is really fascinating like that's the some of the meat of this show that i don't think that they they get into enough and they so they should have done a episode, runner <clears throat> oh, sorry. Yeah. Like the like the mirror universe in DS Nine. They should have had a runner of just one episode a season is about the people back on Earth who are wondering yeah. about Voyager. That kind of been would would have been interesting. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think you could even play with time too if you wanted to. Because I mean, I think yeah. there's yeah. something interesting about them coming back. And you know, it, we just we just did an episode where uh, <clears throat> Janeway flew the ship into another ship and blew it, and like none of that shit mattered. So do an do an episode where you explore some actually interesting ideas, you know, uh, that are based around based on the concept that you're playing. But it, you know, it, th th this episode did get me start thinking about that, and I was like, yeah, this yeah. is all pretty pretty good stuff. Yep, it did. It's maybe its biggest um, its bi biggest success is reconnecting us to the fact that they aren't home and that they're trying to get somewhere. And yeah. I thought that they, it's a success at that because it's like you're saying it was kind of shocking. Really, to like to, to to sort of like have it be prominently realized for you again, be like, oh, of course, mm -hmm. like what what else are these people thinking about? So too much of the show is just run of the mill characters talking about their business as they're walking through the hallway or whatever. Yeah. It's not really yeah. this this problem of like this this <laughs> whole maybe it's not seven seasons of twenty six episodes, but there's this whole range of like 
the variety of response to getting home and what that means and like how people are changing on this journey that the show is not going to get into, but it, it's all yeah. there if you wanted to do something with that idea. Well, the thing that I found funny is I was watching this and, and you get to the scene where Chakotay comes in to tell Bolana what was in his letter. <clears throat> and he's like, I just got some really horrible news. And Bolana's like, what is it? And he's like, I don't really know if I know how to process it yet. I had no clue what it was supposed to be. Like, I was like, mm -hmm. is he a father or something? Did he find out he's got a son or his yeah. family's dead or whatever? And then he's like, the Maquis, the Maquis have all been wiped out. I was like, oh, of course. I totally forgot about that shit. So, and I was thinking like, if you, let's say you're watching Voyager as it's playing, right? Mm -hmm. And you missed season one. Of would Voyager. you, yep. your Voyager, would this scene make any sense to you? Because oh, they I don't even really like talk about that stuff. <laughs> and you've after not the first been season, DS Nine either, right? You're just watching right. Voyager. Yes, yeah. So yeah. like you know, if Chakotay's like the Maquis have been entirely wiped out, and Bond's like, what? All of my best friends. You're like, sorry. Quick question. Uh, <laughs> I didn't realize she was. How, what is their connection? <laughs> so it's just it was... it's just one of those things where it's like it's really good that they they touched on it here. Yeah. But it's picking up plot threads that they kind of have let waver. And I mean, I, four seasons in, you got to let that stuff cool off no matter how good your show is. But but still, it was told, it was something that surprised me. We're being told that Tom's dad has been mentioned before in the series, oh. but he hasn't been fleshed out. Um, yeah, I I mean, I would have treated the Maquis thing the same way as I'm treating Paris's news here uh, as I'm... I'm my as my impression was this is the first time that we're learning about this i would have treated the chicote maquis as the same thing it would have the 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 reason that that storyline works for me is because it ties into the larger franchise in a yeah. kind of interesting way of like the separation from the war is kind of an interesting comparison between the two better uh, shows. better usage of the dominion war this one than the last than, episode than the than the last one yeah yeah, yeah. It, i mean because it's well the, the for the comparison to message in a bottle this episode treats their discovery of this relay station in a way that feels realistic as opposed to a slapstick adventure with the doctor and his right um buddy on, yeah. the, on the other ship that was that was not a good use of it and here it feels appropriate i i, I feel they i feel the chicote stuff is kind of a foul tip like they made contact mm. with the ball but it didn't yeah. really get into play in the way that i thought it probably should have um the blonde stuff is better it, it's i i'm fine with it because it is a you know it, it gets it, it hits Bolana on base if we're going to continue the metaphor yeah, yeah. you know yeah um but yeah as far as chakotay goes yeah not as, don't, not as yeah, it doesn't really yeah chakotay's greatest moment in this one is at the end when jane is you know maybe i'll start sleeping around <laughs> and mm -hmm. the, the camera keeps cutting to chakotay <laughs> And he's just like, do you remember all those episodes we've had in the past four seasons where it's been me and you and it's been awkward? And Jane was like, I wonder if there's anyone on this ship that I would like to date. <laughs> Does Neelix have any friends? <laughs> just cuts back to Chakotay going. <laughs> yeah, sure. Chakotay moment. Sure, Catherine, we can go to the party as friends. No problem. That's fine. I'll give you a ride. Do you excited. need a ride? Let me give you a ride. I'll, I'll give I'm you not a ride. even going to go to the up? party. I wasn't invited, but I'll drive you and pick you up if you need me to. I'll, I can just wait outside. Just You, <laughs> you come out. I'll just be out here. If you want to go home, I'll be waiting. That's Chakotay, the great Indian warrior. Um, the other letter things, uh, the letter ties into the relay, I think. I think what we've learned is that the Herogen did not build the relay, right? That's my understanding is that they consider yeah, it theirs just because old. they they use it, but it's not theirs because why would they use or build that? It was um, built by a great big fat man hundred thousands of years ago called Graviton Eddy. Yeah, that's <laughs> the um, because wasn't the um, <laughs> wasn't the weren't the Dyson not the Dyson spheres? Remember the the Zindi spheres weren't they built around an energy source or am i just making that up i, I can't remember sure Something it's the same like idea that. yeah it's the same idea as what they do here i thought that the relay was kind of a neat um it felt very tng but in a good way to me this mm -hmm. idea of finding this thing it was kind of neat it was neat enough to the point where i was shocked that voyager fucked it up <laughs> and didn't feel particularly <laughs> bad about destroying this hundred thousand year old technology system <clears throat> 
At yeah, the they kind of glossed over that at the end. They're like, we made it out alive. Eh, nothing works anymore, but we're fine. Oh, great. Okay, cool. I mean, are other species, I'm just picturing other species are finding this and using it, and they're like, oh, thank God, I phoned home. I'm at, you can find my location at, and the whole thing just like shuts down, and Voyager is just looking at it, going like, well, we saved our lives, and I'm sure that everyone else has benefited <laughs> for the better, too. Yeah. It's like they it's like they drove their ship into a, a row of telephone booths and they just dominoed their way down the <laughs> thing, breaking all the telephone booths. It's gone. On on our merry way. And for all you young kids, a telephone booth is something that used to be freestanding in the world where you could make a telephone call. It was like a Starlink. I'm sorry. Stuck in the I land. shouldn't I, I don't need to say that. There's nobody listening to this show that is young enough to not know what a telephone po- uh, Our demo is the thirty five to forty five uh, yeah. on YouTube anyway. <clears throat> We're called um, the Rotary Boys. We is, still that our, is, our rotary <laughs> is that our club? Thing? Yeah, you didn't get the card. <clears throat> it was uh, it hurt my finger. Uh, anything about the, the anything else about the real the real is just kind of a uh, technology thing. It, I was I was maybe not, maybe I shouldn't have been surprised. I was a little bit surprised that it's just gone at this point. I'm assuming because they can't yeah. reboot it. Um, but it was surprising that it just came and went so quickly. Um, it served its purpose. It, yeah, it's. I huge. was going to say it's, it's, it's kind a surprising of a, thing. Yeah, it seemed like it was kind of a big deal. Right. It it goes <clears throat> far. It goes. Yeah. It stretches all the way to the Alpha Quadrant, and th- th- maybe that's the. I don't know if the show should have focused on it. Like, I, I imagine if Picard and the TNG crew found this thing, right? Yeah. I think that they would have a pretty, um, like, a sense of awe of it that I could understand to be like, this is kind of remarkable that they found this thing that's so old and it went so far and it's some power that they can't even comprehend. Voyager, <coughs> fittingly, treats it as a means to an end. Yeah. But also doesn't really care. There's no picard-esque concern about the damage that they've done to this thing in their attempt to get home you know what i mean it's it's right. a very distinct difference between the shows i don't think that it's unearned i think voyager can be a little bit more flippant than tng can in this situation but um it's a difference between the two series i think the issue with with this thing though is what else do you do with it honestly like let's say they Nothing. don't blow it up right like what does that get you in the next episode just more yeah. letters, I think. It's yeah, like more a letters. Slow trickle of letters, yeah. So maybe yeah. some recipes or something. Just, <laughs> this is the kind of porn we're watching on Earth right now, guys. I'm like, wow. <laughs> There's, the Harry Kim in his room is watching that one <laughs> centerfold picture load pixel by pixel, like <laughs> just, like just comic book guy waiting print. for the Janeway picture to show up. <laughs> I like that. Um, and it all blows up like right under her boobs. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Kim is the one pushing back against whatever they're threatening to do. He's like, "Not yet, Captain. <laughs> Not yet." Can I just say? Can we wait? Maybe <laughs> seven hundred <69. 69. laughs> megabytes. <laughs> Captain, I've got half a blue bar here. We need a few more minutes. <laughs> Um, Nobody pick up the phone on the ship for the next twenty five <laughs> minutes. The I liked. I thought the letter stuff was strong. I thought that yeah. that was it was good. It was useful. I liked a lot of the character work. At least fifty percent of the character work. I really loved the Tuvok one. I thought that that yeah, was great. I thought good. that I thought that it was played well, and Russ didn't screw up the performance while reading the pad either like he read it but he just sat down and kind of like read it as if it's like a historical novel or something he's just going hmm. um i was surprised I that was that really they, good i was surprised that they didn't do the uh uh interstellar thing where one person just like starts crying hysterically mm-hmm. as they're learning like that their son is oh, just the reading the pad in the something. background or something yeah. yeah people breaking down yeah no. yeah no, they don't. They don't. They don't do anything crazy. Um, <clears throat> it's a very slow process. Of, I just like Neelix with that box handing out the stupid things. Um, each each person gets a pad, which is very funny. Uh, the Herogen are the other aspect of this, I guess. So we know they're going to come back. They come back in the very next episode. Um, 
I like their size. <laughs> that's pretty that's pretty good to me. Um this episode has another uh <clears throat> Voyager specialty, which is the contrivance of a shuttle goes a distance I don't think is very far, but Voyager mm. has no idea what's happening to it for some reason. Where the when the shuttle goes and gets attacked by the ship and Voyager's just like, well, we haven't heard from them. I wonder what's gone wrong. And then they get the beacon and they're like, oh, something. It's just, a, it's a weird sci-fi Star Trek thing of like, the Voyager can see the relay station from that distance. Why can't yeah. it see the shuttle? And why aren't they in constant communication right. with the shuttle? Yeah. I mean, they, they have on-screen capabilities from like half a light year away. Yeah. I don't know why they wouldn't thing. be able to see... Uh, that, uh, the Herogen ship shooting at the other thing, you know? <laughs> Chasing it around. <clears throat> I don't know. Any other thoughts about it? <clears throat> Did you like their... Um... I thought that they were effectively poor man predators, if that makes sense. Like, it's kind of yeah. a backhanded compliment. I thought they were pretty okay at it. Um, I... Could could have been worse. <clears throat> Excuse me. I thought it was very funny when they beamed that r- rubber skin suit onto the ship. Mm-hmm. And like clearly they could only show a piece of it cuz it looked ridiculous. ridiculous but it, yeah. like oh my god, this is just the skin. Its entire internal organs have been ripped out. And it's just like a Halloween mask on the table. <laughs> just <laughs> just a deflated mask that someone has pressed down on. Yeah. Interesting been, idea uh, though. I I actually thought um I thought the way that the episode was going to go was when they got the the message in uh, and Janeway was like, this is, I'm not sure what this isn't from Starfleet. I thought yes. it was, I thought it was going to be, um, messages to the skin suit guy who had been dead. Oh, okay. Yep. I don't know where that would, would have gone, but that was my first instinct was, oh, they found this ship, the the dead guy in it. And now they're getting, you know, messages from this guy's family or something. But yeah, clearly I, for that, some reason, it does you know, in retrospect, it does make a lot of sense. I thought it was the Herogen talking to them, which makes ultimately no sense because of the things they were saying. But I, I thought that's what... Because when they read it, they're very confused about what the words mean. And I thought that that's what it was. But it, mm. it is not. Um, I don't know. Any potential in the Herogen at this point? I don't Effective know. Effective villain? Yeah, fine. I don't really know what they're up to. You know, what's the what are they... Do they have a ethos or anything, or are they just? No, I think it's just predator yeah. stuff. It's just it's, it's sure. just a hunter threat. Um, I mean, we the Voyager did just destroy their porn downloading hub, so I can understand yeah. why they would be mad about that. And maybe yeah, Harry they're going to be super them, wound up when they run yeah. into them next. <laughs> <laughs> you thought these guys get grumpy now? Wait till you see what happens. Um, tell us, Voyager, you are from Earth. Tell us of the one they call Bob Guccione. <laughs> On the scale of, um, I think it's an interesting distinction between DS9 and Voyager is that all of Voyager's, um, Enterprise does this too, all of Voyager's antagonist creations that the show has come up with mm-hmm. are gimmicks in a, in a way. Like they, yeah. they're all a... Enterprise had this problem too, where the Zindi were just like, "This is a bug man. This is a werewolf." Yeah. It's like, okay, what the, what the fuck does that mean? Um, it's the DS9... Family Guy Stephen King problem when they, when he goes in to pitch his new book and he's like, uh, oh, okay. <laughs> uh what about uh, a haunted beer can?" Woo-hoo. <laughs> it is that kind of a thing. In, in contrast to DS Nine, where. You know, the Dominion were the creation, but they're set up as an evil mirror version of the Federation, like a very authoritarian version of the Federation. And there's like, but within them, there's like a, there's like a slave clone dichotomy. There's a sort of like subservient to a God, like viewing a God as kind of like your ruler and stuff. There's the authoritarianism of the changelings and like how they Mm -hmm. view the, the protecting themselves is to eliminate everybody else around them. You know, there's some viewpoints. All the gimmick, the the Voyager ones are just like we're just aggressive gangs, basically. Like right. The, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. The Herogen. What was the? I can't remember what were the troll guys' names. The um. In the first troll season. Troll guys. The oh, brown the skin. Kazon. 
Kazon. The Kazon are kind of like that. The Vidians had potential, but they never really got into them with their disease problem. Um, well, it's just a long way of saying the Voyager creations are built around like these guys are the hunters. These guys are the warring gangs. These guys are the skin people. Um, they don't really have a point of view or a <clears throat> a very interesting like civilization yeah. behind them. They just have a thing that they do. Yeah, I mean, like I think it's uh, <clears throat> it might be a little bit of um, taking the wrong lesson from the Borg a little bit because on yeah. the surface the Borg seem like oh yeah they're just you know they're robots and they're zombies and shit, but they have a yep. f- fairly fleshed out uh, concept and how it relates to the ethos of Starfleet and all that kind of stuff. And whereas, yeah, a lot of these guys, I think the problem is one of the problems anyway, is so many of these, these races on, uh, Voyager are just one and done because Voyager is constantly moving, you know? And so it's, you don't really, I mean, I guess you could on T and G that didn't really stop them from establishing races but it's it, but that was a lot more about like the politics of the federation and stuff so you're you're dealing with people you're going to see anyway uh versus this where it's all new stuff so it's it's difficult to set up characters who are um are really a counterpoint because they just keep cycling through them and and the and the times that they do bring them back they just seem to not take the opportunity to do that either because like the Kazon were never really interesting yeah and uh these guys don't really seem to be that interesting but I do, guess you, do you get the sense or that because but... I, I get the sense that it totally makes sense that the voyager would not run into the same species season after season just because they can't right. they're going they're going yeah. too far and we've complained about that um at the same time, the way that the show dumps its antagonist species feels more like they're like, this isn't working. Give us something new as yeah, opposed true. to we've escaped their space and we no yeah. longer have to deal with these guys anymore. Um, yeah, I mean, they kept, the Kazon kept showing up well after it seemed like Voyager should have been out of it's their It's been space. multiple years of traveling yeah. and you're still bumping into them and it doesn't, doesn't make any sense. Yeah, I... I I'm not super impressed with the Herogen. I think that their their sets are kind of cool and they're they're uh, horrific in a way that Trek normally doesn't do this. Like they are the um, in the way that we always say that like the Borg assimilation is a very clean process except for first contact. The Herogen are like a violent, nasty group, right. um, and I wish that they were written in a way that allowed them to have something other than Tuvok to say, this species has no moral center, <laughs> which seems which seems to be an understatement, but I don't know. I guess there's only so far you can push them. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, who knows? Maybe the next episode they'll give us a long-winded explanation about their entire culture and mm-hmm. government setup or something and the civil we, war they're currently in you that love we the now hunt. find ourselves in the middle of. Yeah, we'll find their prison planet. All right, I guess that's it for Hunter's. Next week will be Prey, which is a very thematic carryover into the next episode. So we will now go to Patreon Thoughts. If you support the show at patreon.com slash the Penske file, you can leave thoughts about upcoming episodes and we read them on the podcast. You also have like 200 plus podcasts that you can listen to on the Patreon. So page. many shows. So many goddamn podcasts. First, oh, sorry. I have to load more comments. Oh, no. Sorry. I can't edit this out either. Kyle's always the first name. Hold on one second. If I keep clicking load more comments, I eventually click on the first person's name and it opens up their profile and I just see their goofy little face (laughs) staring back at me. Let's just read Kyle's profile then. Let's let's air out all the laundry. Who? What the fuck? What am I looking for here? This is Hunter's. There we go. Found it. All right. There's nine of them. Kyle Barrett says, Hunters, when Neelix says he'll treat the letters like gemstones, I hope he means with care and attention, rather than imagining smuggling them across the borders by shoving them up up his arse. He watches Mm. people read those letters like my sister stares at me while I watch her new favorite YouTube video to make sure I laugh in the right places. (laughs) 
<laughs> I'm sure she's showing you our YouTube videos. The first half of this episode is fantastic with the letters fleshing out each character and leading to insightful interactions. I wish we had more context for the friends and family back on Earth. Although if the show was produced 10 years later, it would have the opposite problem of being overloaded with flashbacks. If only the writers had the confidence to just explore the personal reactions instead of adding a lame Herogen confrontation for whom the prop department stole some paint pots from Bob Ross in the neighboring studio. Four titanium whites out of five. Excellent reference to titanium white. Mm. One of the things that, I know it's stupid because it's a TV show and they only have so much money or whatever, but I couldn't not keep looking at the face masks they were wearing and watching the them like. face masks. Yeah. Yeah. And watching them kind of like bob and stretch as they talked because those were clearly made out of like rubber. Yeah. Where it's, yep. Whereas it's supposed to be like a metal faceplate, you know, like the Bane mask or something. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> it is like if you just um, like put a uh, uh, like a red solo cup and like tied it around your face and it just kind of wobbles <laughs> as, you're, as you're talking. Yeah. That's the uh, the limitations of their design. I, you know, nice color blue in the armor, though. <laughs> I will nice say, I, I have been kind of uh, baffled by some of the design choices on this show because I feel like they go from very subtle, arguably too subtle, when they just kind of, you know, give them a weird ear or like yep. a weird nose ridge or something. They go from that to. What if we just took everything we could find and slapped it on an actor? Yeah. You know, like it doesn't feel. It's related to how many of the aliens you see, clearly. Oh, There's definitely. only yeah. two Herogen yeah. in this, you know. Yeah. But just like from a design standpoint, you know, like the, if you, the Borg are so cleanly designed for how busy they look. Mm -hmm. um, and the Klingons are very cleanly designed. Ro the Romulans are very cleanly designed. The the new races on this show feel very much like what do we have in the closet and how many of them do we have? You know, like the Kazon, yeah, yeah. the Kazon have a design to them, but it doesn't feel, it feels very all over the place where it's like giant hair, orange skin, baggy pants. Like it, I don't know. I, it just, <laughs> yeah. I, I think that there's they, nothing slick or, or, or elegant about the designs of any of these creatures. Don't get me started yeah, on the, the yeah. skin guys. I, ugh, I hated those guys. Yeah, well, I, I think they they're um, they would I would argue I mean I'd have to argue that the, the Vidians are designed the way that they are portrayed like they look sure. the way that yeah. they, they should be sure um, I think that the Herogens suffer from I don't know why they're wearing this stuff like the yeah. and the stuff that they're wearing like if you talk about the Romulans or the Klingons like the Romulans are always neat because I like their um, their clothing kind of fits their personalities in a way, mm. like, like the Klingons too. Like the, the what they're wearing kind of like reflects their um, outlook on things. The Vulcans are like that. The Vulcans always have like very like simple robes and very like uniform. The, the Romulans have very angular things that they're like very yeah. rigid in what they do. Um, but the Herogen as hunters, I don't understand why a hunter race wears that as its thing. You know, you, you'd think it would be less gaudy or something. Like, it would be yeah. like a... They, they would be more streamlined or something like that. But no, I it's probably just to hide the fact that they're um, portraying them as larger than life or whatever. But it's it's a weird choice to have them wear that kind of suit. Hmm. Hunters from Tax Old Bear, the Herogen return as new Voyager adversaries. Where did they get their space tech from? They possibly just stole it. But even then, the Herogen, just like the Klingons, are another species that could consist of Bronze Age petty tribes and not be industrialized to any degree. I never got particularly excited by their hunting shtick. Groppler John Zorn says, wouldn't it be funny if we had a character who made everyone uncomfortable? Ha ha ha, look everyone, he wants to read everybody's letters, but they don't want him to. Do he? Here's an idea. Have the captain lightheartedly discover that Neelix has been previewing the letters and have her consent to him reading Mark's letter out loud. Whose face should we zoom in as we learn its nature? Three more flailing swings at a softball right down the middle of the plate, but out of seven seasons and 168 episodes of this disappointing crap. <laughs> that's a, uh, there's a lot of math in that rating. <laughs> there's, there's only... Steiner math. There's only 100, 100 episodes left of the show. Bob, have Jay you ever seen Kester. that? Have you ever seen that that wrestling promo from the early two thousands where Scott Steiner tries to break down his 
uh, probability of winning a triple threat match. No, he, like off the cuff has, or something. Is that the yeah? Problem? He's he's doing a promo backstage. I I to this I don't know if anybody knows if it's if he did this on purpose or if he was just didn't know how math works, which is mm-hmm. fair because he's cutting a promo on live television <laughs> and having to do you <laughs> know fractions in his head. <laughs> Professional wrestler doing fractions on live TV, um, <clears throat> but he's like you know in a one on one match. I have a 50% chance of winning, but in a three, a triple threat match, my percentage is now 33.333%. Now, if the two of them team up on me, then I've got a, a, a 20, <laughs> 25, and one third. But if you don't count the fact that I've got this, then you've got an eighth. And it just goes on for a long time. It's unbelievable. If you, if nice. you Google Steiner, Steiner math on, on YouTube, you'll find it very quickly. <laughs> There's a gif out there. Scott Steiner. His uh, his his, <laughs> Terrifying, his, his body yeah. his his body ups, up, uh, d- uh, like upsets me makes me ill. Yeah, yeah, too big. Bob J Kester says hunters. This episode subplots are much better woven together than average, and the way Belana sublim- subl- uh, sublimates her grief into caring for Paris and Kim, only to let it out later, feels parallel to the Star Wars scenes where Leia comforts Luke for losing the mentor he just met after her planet has been blown up. That's Leia a good had point. no time for her really... sorrows, but yeah, hunters but... make time for fi- four out of five of them. I don't know if I ever considered that in Star Wars, how she's like, it's, it's too bad that your friend is dead. And. <laughs> Yeah, everyone is, her, she knows her entire dead. planet's been eradicated. <laughs> <clears throat> the line was supposed to be read sarcastically, but uh, Carrie Fisher missed the stage direction. Point Extra G says, Hunter, is the heart of this episode of the letters from home? The different reactions from the characters cover the whole spectrum, anticipating the letters and getting happy news. Some not so happy. Some not wanting letters and being content. Others, like Tom, eventually wanting to see their letter and then not having the chance. If the Maquis had stayed as a major part of the series, Chakotay's news from Voyager's sister show would have made it hit a lot harder. As for the Herogen, this is more just a setup for uh, upcoming episodes. Changeling says, it is amazing how different this show has felt this season. If this were season one, the whole episode would have been about getting the letters, and at the end we would never know what they said, other than everyone is just waiting for them to come back home and there's no need to worry. But here it turns what would be inspiring and hopeful into bittersweet and tragic. Great episode. Five Bondage Gear 7s out of five. Oh yeah, we didn't even talk about that. When they, the Herogen tie them up using like leather straps from like a yeah, Judas another. Priest getup. <laughs> Not not the most efficient type thing. <laughs> I did like um uh I do like Seven talking to the Herogen. I think that that's kind of neat. Like I, I her sassiness is very nice in um not sassiness, but it's like a uh her like lack of what do I describe it? Her, just sort of her like upfrontness about her like not liking things is very anti what the rest of the cast does when they meet a new alien. So it's it's that sort of Borg um, superiority complex coming through. But I I like her talking. She's like, "You are a crude species." <laughs> you know, it's just it's just funny funny things to say to them. She Casey's had an interesting interesting episode for her overall. Mm-hmm. Like she doesn't do a ton, but I think the scenes with her are, are pretty good. From the one with the doctor. Which made me want to slap the shit out of that doctor. Oh, where he's yeah, you know, he's it was, talking about what a hero he was. Yeah. Yes, it was up to it was up to me. I can't remember. <laughs> um, and the scene with Janeway, and even even the, the way that uh, uh, Bolana her shuttle was ride with to Tuvok is great. I love I love yeah. her talking to Tuvok. I think that's good stuff. Yeah, yeah. and the Bolana and Harry stuff where he, she's like, you know, everybody can tell you want to have sex with this <laughs> new woman. <laughs> <laughs> like that was kind of interesting too. Like I think I think she continues to be a, a, a good uh, utility player for the show. Yeah, yeah, she's she's a a good add to it. JC Superstar says, "Hunters, I feel I'm in the minority here, but this episode was just okay to me. The Herogen themselves are part of a B plot that apparently has little or nothing to do with the A plot. The receipt of the letters by the crew." Everything we need to know about the Herogen is in this episode's title. I also have zero connection to Harry Kim as a character, and so I can't feel anything for or about him. Three out of five. Final comments. Artorias says, Hunters, too bad they used the predator species in Nemesis. If any reappropriation should have been used, it would have been them as the Herogen, along with the cryogenically frozen, frozen Schwarzenegger and Glover carrying a vintage 17th century flintlock. 
I would still put my money on them predators over the Herogen. Very underwhelming threat. That aside, I thought the main plot about the letters was good. It reminded me a little bit of Castaway when Hanks comes back, only to find that the woman he had hoped, uh, held hope for had moved on when both worlds collided with reality. Such is life, as they say. Three letters from home out of five. Thank you, patrons, for leaving your thoughts. I think we're like a 3.5 on the patrons at this point. A couple fours and a few threes for hunters. Interestingly, Message in a Bottle was much more well-received uh, by the patrons, which I think is an interesting. Interesting is right. That's, that's a very interesting uh, thing. Um, I thought this was a lot better than Message in a Bottle. Still not great to me. On our scale of one to five, I'm going to give this one a three. I know you usually go first. I'm going to give it a three. I think it's a strong three. Um, I really like the letter stuff. I think that the yeah. letter stuff is really good. The Herogen is just fine and not bad enough to really knock the episode down. But I, I live in this episode for the letter stuff. Uh, Janeway's problems, I really enjoy. Uh, Tuvox, I thought was excellent. I, I, and even the, what you were talking about, the setup for the other characters, even if I don't buy the setup for them, I like the problem that they were trying to portray in the episode. So I give it a three out of five. It's a strong three. I think it was a pretty good episode of the show. Yeah. Um, I was on the fence, but I, hmm. see, I, my first thought was four, but yeah. I didn't know if that was too much of a pendulum swing from the other, last episode, which I so did not disliked. like, yeah. yeah. um, <clears throat> especially since they're doing a lot of stuff in this one that I wish they had done in the last one. Um, I'm going to say four. I'm going to give it a four. I think this is one that I would say if you're going to watch, if you're going through, if you're going through, what the fuck is the name of the show? Voyager? Voyager. If you're going <laughs> if through you're... Voyager, I think this is one that you should watch. I think this is one of the more important character episodes of the whole series, honestly. Yeah. Um, because it is, it's the one time that they've really touched out, you know, reached out to what life is back on earth and it has actually made an impact on them in a way that's 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 interesting yeah yeah that the characters can actually talk about agreed yeah. i'll stick with a three strong three clay gives it a four and that's it for hunters the next episode is prey thank you everybody for listening if you want to support the show patreon.com slash the penske file is the best way to do it patreon.com slash the penske file clay do you have anything you want to say before we go uh check out rotten horror picture show on patreon we're going through the halloween movies january was halloween february is halloween two march halloween three so on and so, so forth. on and so forth yes um <clears throat> i do want to say i'm actually uh i just guested on uh a, a podcast that was started by my cousin who's a big uh, film noir guy called shadows of noir where uh, he and i talk about the film kiss me deadly which is a very fun uh, later era film noir based on uh, the, the Mike Hammer books by Mickey Spillane. And it's very, mm -hmm. it's uh, it's a very heightened movie that makes a lot more sense if you think of it like a David Lynch movie. Because if, you, if you're familiar with David Lynch and specifically the more like crime oriented stuff that he does, it feels like he's lifting whole cloth from this movie. So recommend it. And uh, yeah, it, you can check that out. That's on wherever you get your at podcast from shadows of noir is the name of the show shadows of noir that's it and he's going to be joining it. us on uh rotten right. horror to do uh night of the hunter while amanda is away and then wes is also going to be joining us for a couple so yep that might already be happening at this point oh, so. all right. sure if it is it's out there thanks everybody for listening thank you for supporting the show we'll be back next week with prey see ya